Before we start today's show, I felt compelled to write a poem about this evening's game. 89th minute. The crew have never come back. Not tonight, though. No. A haiku by your host, Mars. Everything about this place is my home. I'm your host, Mars, and this is episode two of the Upper 90 Club, a roundtable discussion where five friends current feeling about the Columbus crew. This episode is sponsored by the Concession Stand. Concession Stand. Haas? Where I'm buying my truth and using my $5 off coupon. Concession Stand. Tracy? Where I had to wait 17 minutes while my uh, year and a half year old took his uh, socks, shoes off, screamed at everybody, and threw everything to allow me to get in line faster. Perfect. Uh, this episode is sponsored by the concession stand. Concession stand. Mort? The concession stand where you evaluate which kid you're going to sell to afford another beer. All right, all right. Uh, concession stand. Ben? Where I didn't go to the game, but I did have a baker's dozen <laughs> keystone lights in the corner of a Hocus Pocus 2 party where I sat inside of a closet while charging my phone. Back to you, Mars. All right. Joining me again in the club, I have Ben, Mort, Trey, and Haas. Say hocus pocus, everybody. Hocus pocus. Well, you all sound okay, I guess. Thanks. Uh, today's show, we debate the lineups, discuss the subs, we react to the late win, review the table, and get a quick update on the USMNT. So stick around and we'll be right back. When I saw the starting lineup tonight, I was at first wondering if we were trying to lose because I didn't see, (laughs) like, I just didn't see how this team was going to win. You know, like, especially up top, uh, we haven't talked about it on the pod, but certainly on the group text, we've talked about Hurtado at great length, and I was pretty disappointed. That said... You know, beyond just Hurtado, what what were your thoughts on the starting lineup? Yeah, so the starting lineup, let's start from the back of his room. Then Marrera and Santos on the outside. Williams then um, Milos starting in the center because Mensa was out with a, was a hamstring? Yeah. Or leg. It was a muscle injury. Yeah, thigh. Um, leg, general leg. And then Artur Nagby is the dual pivoting sixes. Um Aiden looks like he was running Z's spot up at the 10, and then Diaz, the speed human, and uh, Molino, which we all kind of liked Molino starting on the outside. And then the wild card, Hurtado, which, like you said, we probably texted more <laughs> than he's actually played this so, season. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't want to hate. I just think that when I saw Hurtado up top, and then I saw that Zellerayan was not in the starting lineup, my first thought was they're going to try and lose. Um, and then I stepped back and remembered that they're playing three times in eight days. And this is a strategic decision. So so those those I, I should clarify those were my initial thoughts. But Hurtado was working, man. Like as much as I don't like him, that dude, he was settling the ball. He was laying it off. He put the work in. Um I was perplexed by the Artur, Nagby, Morris starting lineup. The fact that Zellerion didn't start, I mean, in the end, obviously, at this point, is fine, but very confusing. But Hurtado was putting in the work. Like, people want to hate on Hurtado. He was settling the ball. He was getting his head on the ball. Dude was working. Yeah, and I don't want to get too much into the game itself because I think the lineup had something to do with how we played. I was still shocked to see Artur in there. Um, he hasn't brought the energy at all. And, of course, Hurtado. I, I don't understand it. You have a hot striker sitting on the bench. You know, he's on fire, Russell Rowe. Why did you put him in there as a wild card? 
But that, uh, that other than that, there was nothing in the lineup other than obviously Zell Rayan not being there, which is a huge bombshell. We only play with one D uh, DP, mm-hmm. which is shocking. But that's one only thing that stood out to me. But it, what stood out to me was obviously we get into that is yeah. how we started playing. So when I was watching it, I was at home in Chicago. Ben was at a Hocus Pocus viewing party. And... <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the rest of us were were there in person. So can somebody tell me what it was like, uh, at least in the first half, and then we can kind of talk through how the second half unfolded? I could jump in right in real quick. I saw some of the first long balls and how we start playing. I didn't recognize anything about what we've been as a crew, as a team for the last maybe 10 years. I have never seen anything like it. I heard comments, is, are we trying to confuse them? <laughs> if, is this just something? No, I, I was serious. It's like, this is something we're going out to confuse New York to say, like, hey, we're going to hit the long ball. And I was thinking, I saw the long ball, but then Hurtado can win a freaking ball. So that's the other thing. We didn't get back in the space. And then it just got worse from there on. I heard comments around me saying, did he put this line up because he wants to get fired? Mm-hmm. Regarding <laughs> yeah. That was like some, this was legit comments from the people around where I sit. And um, that was that was just shocking. That's just how we came off the bat. And I know people have other opinions about that too. Yeah, and it was crazy. It did seem like there was a lot of just direct balls, like just booting it. And it reminded me of back when I was playing younger, when I was just like, yeah, just kick it long. But I wouldn't exactly figure out that it was, I mean, I wouldn't even think that it would work considering it was Hurtado and he's not really a target striker. I will say I agree with Haas. The team worked very hard. Like, say what you will about the lineup, say what you will about the tactics. They were up for the game. And that's something that I haven't always seen. But, I mean, both teams, it felt like a playoff game. They were going after each other. And the fact that there wasn't more cards is mind-blowing to me because there were some rough challenges, both sides. Trey, you want to talk about first half? I don't understand the lineup. I do and I don't. I get the subs. The subs makes make sense in May. They don't make sense the 1st of October. Um, I get that we have to... You, re- mean, you mean like the starting lineup? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it, it's fine. It's fine. It, it. I get everybody worked hard and played hard, and it, it wasn't horrible. You had a, an odd goal with uh, Frankie Maya, and nobody stepped to him, and room didn't dive. I get it. That's fine. But at the end of the day, it's October 1st. Our best players need to be on the field. We have three games in seven oh, days. Right. We're pushing for the playoffs. Why are we not playing our best 11? I love our subs. I love the energy. Right. We're it's playing fine. the toughest opponent with regards to standings. Why is this the team on the field? Yep. I think that was all of our our, our thoughts. Uh, a little note on that goal. From what I understand, the people at the game thought Room should have tried harder. I know there's a deleted tweet from Nordak that said, um, LOL. Eloy room or something like that. You guys thought he should have dove from where I was at watching it. Um, and then also re seeing some of the shots in the, um, discord deck that I was looking at. There was no way he could have gotten that in my opinion. It also like glanced off the inside post. It was a pretty good shot. I didn't fault room. I have, on less, first I have less of an issue on room. I have more of an issue with nobody stepping to the ball. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you're playing with two, two sixes and there's yep. somebody right at the top of the box or like 10 feet outside the top of the box. There should be someone there and there was nobody. And it was a good, and I mean, that happens. Ultimately, I thought the defense played pretty well. Um, I, I agree. I, I, center backs, yeah. especially in the whole defense was solid. Other than the fact that they could just pass the ball back and forth and back and forth and back and forth for about 20 minutes in a row, they were playing great, like defensively at least. Um, the one player that disappointed me the most and has been disappointing for a while now is my favorite player on this team, Nagby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that's the way because Porter, this is how he utilizes him. 
He's one of the most athletic guys. He can turn up and take on guys and pass them. He never does. He takes 90% of his passes backwards, backwards, backwards safe. He also he has actually given up the ball a couple of times lately too. But again tonight, the ball goes to the sides and back. He never takes it up the field. And he's a guy that can do it. And I don't really understand why he doesn't. One of the best I've ever seen. He just glides by people. I it's it's so fun to watch and it's so impressive. But I agree. It may be part Porter and the way he has him playing. With Artur in there, you would think that maybe Artur would get stuck in a little bit more and Nagby would... I mean, I did see him come up and play a little bit more advanced role sometimes. Another thing I saw in the first half that I thought was weird was uh, I saw Aiden Morris drop between the center backs to, to get the ball and distribute it out which is one of my biggest pet peeves. I was okay with it tonight for the most part, but it was a, that is a Michael Bradley thing that I cannot stand because it takes away when you drop a six or an eight. I mean, he's an eight or he's even playing as like almost like a 10, but you drop him in between the center backs. It takes out like an outlet. It takes out both center backs and the play moving the ball forward. So you're all of a sudden playing with six people on the field instead of 10 it's just it drives me nuts. But again, hindsight, twenty twenty, it it worked. We matched their intensity. You know, as a well, as a crew fan, it was it was another well, so game. Let, yeah, let's talk about the subs then. I mean, you know, the, at at the half, it was zero zero, um, and we made some changes. I got it. Zellerion came on for our tour uh, the fifty fourth minute. And Jason Russell Rowe and Etienne okay. came on in the 70th minute for Molino and for Hurtado. Hurtado. I'm blanking. Hurtado. Yeah. Hurtado. Yeah. And then Far- Farsi came in for Diaz. Oh, right. yeah. They're at the end. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the second half um, and how the substitutions made an impact. You know, there were, there were subs throughout the half. Starting in the 54th with Zell Ryan, I was glad to see him join the game, but um, some others sprinkled in at the end, and Luis Diaz uh, toward the very end of the game. Uh, did they make an impact? Yeah, they made the game. Um, we talked about this actually on our first pod, or at least I did, where I would love to see Nagby, Morris, and Z in there in the middle. And as soon as our tour's number came up and I saw him come off, I was like, oh, yeah. You know, Porter's listening to the pod. I'm <laughs> dialed in. He totally understands me. We're on a level. Um, and then after that, you know, you have, which which gave him a lot of time to, like, grow into the game. Then he brought in um, Etienne, and he also brought in um, JRR, which I'm going to call him because it's Jar. I'm going to call him the pirate. He brought in the pirate up top and he gave them 20 minutes to run in. So that actually gives them, you know, 20 minutes to grow into the game. And they, I mean, if you look at it, you know, pirate got the assist and so did Farsi. Like the two crew, two subs impacted the game huge and both got the assists for Etienne's goal. I mean, I, does anybody know if Hurtado had a shot on goal? No, we didn't have a shot of goal. I at don't all think until yeah, the exactly. 80th minute. Mm-hmm. We didn't have one shot on goal to the 80th minute of this game. Yeah, and, and no thanks to Molino's free kicks, by the way. <sighs> yeah, rough. Uh, uh, that's that's something that I really wanted to talk <laughs> about. And uh, at the game, I mean, making a lot of notes on my phone during the game. Nerd, nerd, nerd alert. Talk. Uh, all all of our free kicks. All of our corner kicks, all of our set plays were the worst. The worst. We're not putting the ball into the box when we're loading people. I mean, sometimes we load people into the box. Uh, Sometimes we don't. But our free kicks, our corner kicks were terrible. Playing them short every time. Every time we play it short, we end up kicking it back to the goalie. No, we didn't kick it over in the bowl. We gave it up. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Matt. So bad, or giving it to the other team. So bad. And it's funny that we do that when we have Santos on the field. I know you want to in-swinger, but you have a guy that can really deliver the ball mm. on the field. 
and you decide to put a guy that doesn't look like you're taking a set piece in his life. I think I said it during the game. Um, the biggest difference between Sands and seeing Santos on the field was Sands is willing to take one or two players on and move the ball up the sideline. And Santos is content with the 30 yard ball, the end swinger to no one over and over and over again, the hopeful ball, which kind of plays out every now and then, except for it doesn't <laughs> over and over and over again. How many times do I have to need to, do I need to see Santos hit another end swinger again? Yeah, he had a great he had a great service tonight, though, which is fine, except for it doesn't go to well, anybody. Well, yeah, but he the, he started that sequence that led to the first goal, the second goal. <laughs> I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Uh, uh, I thought he had. I thought he had a good night, and I, which is, I want to give a shout. I, I think it I was. Don't I don't hate I think on Santos. Was, I don't dislike it. Well, it was when he was pushed into that winger position, right when the sub came in for Diaz. I think. Yeah, I, I'm much happier with Santos in a winger type role than I am with him in yeah. a back. Agreed. A, an outside Agreed. back role. Uh, he had like tonight when he assisted or 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 started that sequence. I felt like I was watching. Ethan Finley again, you know, where like he has the speed along the line and put it put it in. Now I don't know that his service led to the goal, but it it certainly started the sequence um that ended with the goal. I've got a question. I must have completely missed this. When Farsi came in, did they yeah. did he come in at left back and push yeah. Santos up? Yeah. I thought yeah, he came in as a winger because he was so no, far up. Okay. He he was busting his ass up and down the field. And one of those chances, he got a chance in the far post once. I don't know how f he got in there. He was the first guy up there and he started from the left back. So he had a he came in with some really, really good energy. Yeah, and I'm a huge fan of that. I love, love, love when you have a left back. And we started the game like this with we have Santos somebody who's left footed on the left side that screams up the side and gives service in and your left winger is a right footed player that cuts inside like Molino. Um, we do that for the men's national team with Pulisic because he cuts in and then he creates all that space for Anthony Robinson up the sideline. So I do love that, but man, Farsi looked good. I mean, I've seen him hey, a little bit for crew too, but whew. how much of an underappreciated player? Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like to, today, for how important is he for our attack? I, I seen it like the only good things that we see in this season of goals and things coming, he's involved in it. And even today, I mean, he had that big yeah. miss. He hit one over. Yeah, yeah. Another one that just went a little bit wide. I think he had, yeah, he had like three it shots. Looked like goal. he was. I, I said out loud, he was. He it looked like he was in a lounge chair while he took that shot. Like he was just leaning so far back that. You know, he's, it was like a field goal. But nobody made anything happen until he came in. Yeah. And he really made those challenges. He made those little runs into the back and made things happen. Uh, if he hadn't come in today, this would have been a 1-0 loss, and we would have been standing there booing. And I have to admit, I was booing so much and using so much vulgar language out there. I was lucky. I was. We put all the kids a little down to the left and the guys to the right. And like... I was almost embarrassed when we scored because I was so negative to everything that happened out there. And then on the second goal came, I totally forgot everything I said and I loved on everybody again. But um, that was kind of the flow today. Watching it on the TV, you know, not being there, I thought we played actually pretty well. Yeah, um, I know the people that were at the game didn't think that. Um, I guess it's just more me watching them match the intensity of Red Bull. But you compared it to a hocus pocus <laughs> party. Yeah, that's also true. <laughs> no, I, I think in person it was the crew was always on the back foot. We were always reactive and we were never proactive. And when we were, we we're playing the ball 40 yards across the field or backwards. That's how the night went until the last 10 minutes. And by 10 minutes, I mean the 85th on yeah and i think uh the etienne shouts actually 
kind of great. I think he might be better off the bench. What do you guys think? Because we we when he starts, I think he has the talent to start, you know, every once in a while, but it seems like when he comes off the bench, he provides something different. I don't know what it is. I can't identify what's different about his play when he subs in, but man, Haas and I went to the Chicago game and in Chicago and you know, I, I I've been a fan of his, but I I don't know that I ever felt like I, you know, I looked to him or trusted, you know, trusted him with the fate of a game before that game, right? We were down 2-0 at the half, um, and he scored twice. Cucho came in for his first game and and won that game, but, you know, the that win really rested on, on his ability to score twice, and then I... I heard at the end of this game that that was the only other time that he scored twice in a game. Is that <laughs> that's true? A, that's what we heard Bro. tonight yeah. on the broadcast. Uh, check it. I love so, it. So, well, and I, I don't know. Tonight, like, it, I, when they scored, and we can talk about the goals. I want to talk about the goals. We've been, we've been talking about these, you know, the lineups for a while, but, you know, really the, at the end of the day, and apparently we're not used to this because it's never happened before. But uh, when he scored in the 89th, um, I was expecting a draw or a loss, frankly. Um, you know? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, th- that said, in hindsight, ha- seeing him do it again um, a few minutes later, uh, gave me a, a, a lot of pride in, in his effort and, and ability, right? I mean, it, it, effort was team wide, but uh, his his ability finished the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, October first <laughs> must be opposite day, huh? Yeah, it's like a taste yeah, of our no, own medicine. Yeah, totally. Except a positive one where we actually win and, instead of losing at the end of it's the game. Very foreign feeling. What is this strange when we have had so many games where you feel we played well, had control of the game? deserved the win and we threw it away and today i felt like we didn't deserve anything from this game yeah in person we, back and win it and we deserved it yeah in this in person completely agree we did not deserve this win this was like the makeup call right where um, like speaking of calls the ref was maybe <laughs> the worst i've ever okay. seen ever? oh my god they showed a high like a replay of his call where the dude wasn't even touched. He just fell over, and the dude called a foul on us. I mean, and it wasn't just the stuff on us. The ref Unpaid was parking just tickets. bad. So bad. I want to look up that ref. I'm curious. MLS, baby. I'm curious. About- I, I think it's worth the yeah, investigation. <laughs> <laughs> Please email us your resume at upper90club upper pod at gmail.com. Pro referee. Email us, bro. this inquiry. <laughs> yeah, the entire yeah, the entire game my you know, my dad sits at home with his tinfoil hat and he's like, Don Garber and MLS don't want us to win. That's why the refs got an earpiece and you're telling him to not give calls and I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's how it works. I understand what you guys are saying. When they did some of the replays there was some there I mean, we did make contact on some of them. Like our tour's yellow card was legit. He did trip the guy and was like, you know, up as uh, Z did foul a guy right outside the box. It seemed like a foul, which I thought was, you know, touchy. But no, he got him. I did think it was interesting. There was one moment where um, Santos beat him down the line, and the guy didn't even play the ball. He just stopped and just like leveled him. And we got the call, but there was no card. And I was like, wait, what? How is that not a card? Like he had him beat and the guy. It, I'll have to pull it up for you. I think it was around, I think it was around 30 or maybe 50. I can't remember exactly where it was at, but he got leveled. And the guy just looked at him in the eye as he was passing him and just elbowed him down. But ultimately, the ref, I mean, it was a chippy game. It, it was, was it was probably right 50, off the 50. bat. The yeah, energy yeah, on yeah, the day yeah, was probably fifty yeah. fifty. But in person, yeah. in person, it did feel like Columbus was getting short short I, end of the stick. 
toward sure. the end of the game, I like the last 10, 15 minutes, I felt like I was watching a playoff game. Like the whole game when, felt like that. When that second goal was scored, for sure. I, you know, my heart was just pumping through my chest, you know, like it felt like we had just won a championship or something. It was crazy. Yeah. I I, I want to tell you something crazy it was about I would say about 70 minutes in, like 50 minutes after they they scored in the early 50th minute, 53rd minute or something. The stadium and the energy just was disappearing. You hear more and more murmur. You're looking out of Nordic, and now there's only like a person here and there that are still jumping up and down. People were really about to turn on this team. It was it was like I was already turned on that team, but that's another story. But people started following my lead instead of the chance and follow my standing up and yelling at people. I don't know if you saw me from up there, Haas, but... I was I was beginning a little obnoxious down there. <laughs> I saw the dome. Uh, yeah, but that was really strange. The, the energy uh, in the crowd really was just dying and dying quick. And then we got the subs, and that actually rescued that. And a I lot of people that actually was, that was a big move. A lot of people left. Yeah. Yeah. People people yes. were gone. Really, I was going to ask that. Yeah, a lot of people were. I mean, I had changed positions from where we were at. Um, I had moved over to see a friend, saw the first goal as we were as we were walking through the concourse and then heard around to where we needed to be and ended up catching the second goal right as it happened. And you could just from being in one position right next to the Hawes all the way over to the other side of the stadium, you could just feel the intensity kind of kind of like instead of people turning around and walking out of the stadium they were turning around and watching the TVs and watching the field. And it was just a completely different feeling within, you know, six minutes from one side of the stadium to the other, which was actually pretty cool. Like, you know, Matt or uh, Mark was saying kind of gives that playoff feeling, you know, like where people yeah. really actually care about minute by minute versus. Yeah. I'm going to get to my car and get out of the yeah. parking lot faster. I want to add to that. I had a second in there at about a 60th minute, and uh, my friend's Jesse's wife. Was <laughs> like, just call her by name. Her name's Aaron. Early to- <laughs> <laughs> What's her social? <laughs> yeah. Well, my my my, I, I said to my friend. Well, she was saying, "Hey, we should just get out of here. Can we leave early?" Actually, I it started actually with me saying, "You know what? I'm I'm tired of the pre-court," and I told to uh, tired of this pre-court. And I told told Jesse, why do we do this? Why do we put ourselves through this? Right now we've been moaning and bitching and moaning for the last 45 minutes. And I literally said to him, why do we do this? He looked at me and said, I, I don't know, Morton. I don't understand it. And then like 95, fifth minute, it's like, this is why we do it. The feeling we have right now, this is why we're here. We're hitting that high and that's we waiting for that high. And then we Which got it. Which we've apparently end. never so, had before. Freaking beautiful. <laughs> We've just been waiting. <laughs> you, you almost gave up 30 minutes this year, too not. soon. For, for the <laughs> yeah, I feel like no, 60 like, minutes is a bit of a stretch. Like 85, I, I'd be like, yeah, I was that, planning I can understand can, getting I wanted frustrated to and leaving. This, but this pause 60 section, minutes. 60 see. minutes. I was like, there's if we lose this game, there <laughs> yeah. is no reason for us to convene. <laughs> because, you know... We've got Miami, Orlando on Wednesday. We're playing Wednesday. We're going to sync up Wednesday. Why in the world would we get on here and just bitch? Uh, it would do no good. And I'm I'm so glad that we're here. Um, yeah, we'll take a break and be right back. Okay, so the lineup was lacking our number nine because of a language ejection that we saw here midweek. Um, what do we know about that? And what are your thoughts on on whether it should 
whether it's at stand, I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter. But um, tell me what you know about that situation now, Ben. Yeah, as it stands now, it seemed that Cucho had said something to an opposing player during the Portland game. The word is a, a non-English word that starts with a P. You can look it up. Everybody knows what it is. I We know that FIFA in general and all across the world, this is literally the only word they have red flagged. You know, foul language happens. It's It's a sport. It's intense. Totally get it. This is, I'm not kidding, the one word you just can't use. And for whatever reason, it keeps showing up in the game. They keep saying it. And he used it, and I, I, I think it's fair. It, it stinks. It sucks. Um, but there's no tolerance for this specific word. And honestly, a one-game suspension is the best we can ask for. I believe there was, back in 2015, someone else used this word, and they got a three-game suspension. Um, Cucho got a one-game well, so. See, how does he not know what you know? You know, you're you're not a professional. Not even close. So <laughs> how does this kind of thing happen? Like there had been a report that came out that said he hadn't been hadn't been informed by the team of specifics regarding league rules. But I think like Ben had just mentioned is this is a known word that it should just not be said during a game period. I mean, whether you agree, disagree with it, it is what it is. This is on the national stage. Um, I, you know, Mexico has dealt with FIFA regulations, having to play home games without fans. Yeah. Um, you know, the stoppages in play. I think it happened in Chicago. Was it Chicago? Um, where they actually stopped the the U.S. versus Mexico game? Um, yeah. Due, yeah, due to this word. They took a 15-minute break, and it's kind of a warning shot. Yeah. So, fair. It's fair. One-game suspension. I get it. National national broadcast. He said the word. Period. I mean, even even if it wasn't a national broadcast, if it gets picked up and he actually said it, it's fair. I get it. Yeah, and I don't want to spend too much time on this. We're going to hop into the game because it was so awesome. But um, I know a lot of shouts are going out about the front office not giving the mandatory training to the players about it or um, either the players didn't get the mandatory training or the staff didn't and they didn't you know, tell the players. But in my opinion, this is common sense. Um, Cucho came out and apologized. That's all he can do. He got the one game suspension. He will serve it. Luckily we won. We can move on, but just understand that there is so many great cuss words out there that he can use and we all should use, but that's one you just can't use. Like I used many of them when I saw the starting lineup for today. Yes. Uh, We, would usually go through the table at the top, but since we're recording this immediately after the two to one victory over New York Red Bulls, much needed win with only two more games in the season, uh, we're going to go through the table now and see where we stand and see what's to come for the next two games. Matt, talk us through it. So the crew are currently at 45 points, tied with Miami, 45 points. The crew are in eighth place. Miami's in seventh place. Orlando in sixth place, also mm. at 45 points. Cincinnati Preach. in fifth place, 46 points. We got a tight race going on right now. Charlotte Super tight. with a big win over Philadelphia tonight. Uh, pushing up to 41 points. Well, so this is good. You know, so can I be honest with you guys for a second? I wasn't really listening on the last pod. I looked at the at the schedule here. Orlando Miami on Wednesday. That's a big game. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yep. Cuz yeah. Matt just said and I am listening now that yeah. we have 45 points. Orlando has 45 points. Miami has 45 points. 
and they play each other on Wednesday. We play Charlotte, right? And then we play Orlando on Sunday. Yep. So if we win two more times, we get to keep making a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mark, to further into that spiel, you got them more. You started to sound like Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like you, what you, is you, going why on? Why is Orlando so important? Why yeah, do but also guys since talk, he, keep talking about Orlando. <laughs> yeah, well, since he since he lost today, so. no, since so Cincinnati's at thirty three games, so we have a game in hand on them, and they. Yeah, I think we we, uh, yeah. we choose our own destiny right now. Yeah, but Orlando like, Orlando is also at thirty one games, so that so Only they have 31. a game in hand on us. Well, they have a game tomorrow. I know. I'm just saying. Who are they up against tomorrow? Uh, let me see. Uh, they they play at New York City FC, who's super tough. Yeah. So there's a good chance in so Orlando could drop NYCFC, and then drop against Miami and then drop against us and that puts us through. I mean, so we're rooting for NYCFC. Currently on the MLS predictions, we are above 50% to get in. Sorry, Haas. I totally derailed your update. Go ahead. Columbus is at 45 points. Miami, 7th place, 45 points. Orlando, 6th place, 45 points, but only 31 games played. Cincinnati, 46 points, 33 games played. So we got a tight, it's a tight grouping here, fighting for these last three spots in the East. Oh, it's so exciting. So exciting. New York City is going up against Orlando here tomorrow night. Big game. Mm. Yeah, like I said, as a consumer, love it. As a crew fan, damn it. (laughs) (laughs) So we're looking to have NYCFC... (laughs) Win tomorrow against Orlando. All right. Yeah. And City's good. And they're also still fighting for the home playoff spot, right? So, yeah, they want the points. Yeah, it makes sense. And they're tough. They're tough at home, too, because they play on a um, kids' baseball field, I think. So, T ball field. (laughs) Yeah. I think they literally just played T ball against the other team. Philadelphia losing tonight 4 0 to Charlotte could affect their uh, supporter shield fight. Yeah, taste of their own medicine. They're usually beat teams four to zero. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're now above fifty percent on the MLS prediction site on making it. So, and we also, I mean, Cincinnati's at thirty three games. Um, so they, we have a game in hand on them as well. So at this point, we control our own destiny, which is nice. More than I can say as of yesterday. Yeah. I mean, I think the big question is Charlotte. We got to come in with who we who we were playing already in Charlotte. We're 16 minutes in or whatever the timing is. Do we know if Mensa was off? Yes, Mensa was off. Uh, Porter came out and said Mensa should be good to go for that game. I heard otherwise. Yeah, I mm. heard... Mensa should be in unless he's hurt and they need to sub him out. But if he was subbed out in that game, you'd have to play with the players you left. Well, I don't know. MLS it, makes a wait and see. Along. Yeah, wait and see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start. You're right. We'll start in the 60th minute, 16th minute. And it's a frozen roster. So whoever was playing at the time, provided they're currently healthy, they will be the ones on the field. And... Any subs you want to make, you got to like just make them immediately, right? Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I wish they would just start it over. That I, I don't know. I mean, unless you unless you know. Yeah, I don't understand <laughs> Gam or Tam or any of that stuff. And I I literally think they're just making it up as they go along. They're like, oh wait, how many DPS do you want? I mean, the LAs get 50, uh, Columbus gets two, so that's fine. All right, so we'll look forward to Wednesday, and we're going to we're gonna cheer against Orlando tomorrow uh, when they play New York City FC. Um, and if they lose, uh, our destiny will truly be in our own hands. So we'll hope for a good result tomorrow with uh, Orlando and New York City FC. But it's getting pretty late here, so... I, I know Ben wanted to talk about the U.S. men's national team, so 
lay it on us so we can all go to bed. <laughs> Thank you, Myers. <laughs> uh, yeah, right off the jump, uh, Pepe scored again. Um, I don't know if anybody saw this goal, but you should definitely look it up. Uh, he's able to, it's a, it's a ball over the top. He's able to body off a defender. And as, as he bodies off the defender right around, like right in the box, he goes down, he hits the ground. He's able to kick it bicycle. from the ground. Is like, it a bicycle kick? <laughs> no, no. He, he's able to kick it like up through almost the top of the, the goal. It's a, it's a wonderful goal. You should check it out, but that makes it two goals and one assist in three games. And the, um, in the first division over there, uh, Mort's going to bed. Uh, Stefan um, started when all 90 uh, almost gave up a terrible empty netter and he, uh, his team lost one to zero. Um, Tillman came off the bench, had an assist for Rangers. They won four zero easy game. Pulisic came off the bench and got the assist for Chelsea who beat Crystal Palace at Crystal Palace two to one phenomenal game. I, yeah, I the assist is a bit of a he touched a ball to a guy that dribbled a guy yeah, and they put it up for ninety. Yep. Yeah, he <laughs> sneezed it and um, was it Connor? He put it. Uh, yeah, great. Um, Peacock went. Chelsea played Connor. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're best All friends. Right. Yeah. All right. So uh, next up is Peacock. He went ninety. Uh, Union Berlin lost. Um, his rating was a five point nine. He did not do well. Uh, Scally went 77 minutes and got a 4.7 rating. He did not do well. They also lost five to one. Gladbach got whooped. Uh, Sergeant went 90 with Norwich uh, rated 7.5. The only player that was rated higher was Pookie who got the goal. Uh, Dust came off the bench at 72 um, and Milan beat. Um, I can't remember Empoli who they were playing. And that was three to one, but three of those goals were scored in, I think 90 plus stoppage or something like that, 85. So it was bonkers. Um, but who cares about all that crew crew all the way? All right. All right. We'll see everybody Wednesday. We'll see everybody. When, well, after Wednesday, no, it'll be after Wednesday. No, no, not hold on. We're, we're signing off right now. He lost. His <laughs> He's gone again. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks everyone for joining the club. We hope you'll listen next week and every week, even in the off season to celebrate or commiserate. We'll save you a seat. If you like this podcast, please give us five stars and subscribe. You can email us at upper90clubpod at gmail.com. That's upper90clubpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at upper90clubpod. Go crew! I want to say, even if this episode recording sucked, I had a good time. So have a good night.